Watch out, it's a live mic. This is Mark McNeese in New York City, and you're listening to another edition of the Live Mic Podcast. Welcome to the podcast. This is Mark. And my guest this week is a returning, recurring guest. It's poet Michael Broder. Now, Michael, you're a publisher now, too, or you're going to be. Is That's correct, yes? That is correct. And I'm going to talk to you about that. Um, we met a couple of years ago at the Rainbow Book Fair. You were sitting across from me and my now husband, Frank. And uh, I've just taken a delight in you since we met and this is i think the third time that you've been on a podcast with me so thank you very much for doing this again my pleasure um i specifically wanted to do this with you because of your project you have um the hiv here and now project and i would like you to talk a little bit about the genesis of that um and what that's all about so we can just dive right into that. I, I saw on your Facebook page, by the way, for that for the project that you you're over a thousand likes now, which is really nice. That's exciting, yeah. On the Facebook page, um, which I um, think is important. I don't really know exactly. I have this vague idea that it's sort of uh, and, and in, it's imp- the Facebook likes really just sort of ultimately translate into awareness and. Uh, people to sort of reach out to uh well we'll get to that really because the the the, the project itself is, is sort of leading up to a, a print anthology although many people are more familiar with it as a poem a day countdown online mm-hmm. uh to 35 years of aids which i am giving a sort of birthday of june 5th uh 1981 which is when uh, a federal, uh, the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, uh, federal agency has a weekly, I guess, a weekly publication called the Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report, uh, which does not sound scintillating. And it's what it it sounds like. It's really for healthcare, for like public health professionals. But on June 5th, 1981, there there was an article in what they call the MMWR about five cases of PCP pneumonia uh, in, you know, I'm actually going to forget the, uh, in, in either New York or Los Angeles or New York, New York and Los Angeles. I'm not sure which, but it was the first five cases uh, that were being observed of pneumocystis pneumonia in otherwise healthy, relatively young gay men. Mm-hmm. And in effect, that was the birthday of, of AIDS. Um, uh, you know, you can look at timelines of AIDS now that carry it back to its origins in the 1950s and, you know, African jungles and so forth. But just in terms of the, the epidemic that we think of as the AIDS epidemic, that was kind of when it first began to bubble, bubble up. Yeah. And later that summer, there was an article in the New York Times in July about 41 cases of, uh, of uh, Kaposi sarcoma among otherwise healthy young gay men. And that's kind of, that was the first time it was in a mainstream publication. Uh, not, not all that many regular people like you and me read Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report. But in any case, so you mentioned genesis of the project. So uh, AWP, the Associated Writing Programs meeting, which is sort of the largest gathering annually of uh, creative writers, used to be writers that were associated with MFA or creative writing programs, but now it's really just, it's really opened up and it's, you know, anywhere from sort of 13 to 15,000 writers gather for this conference every year, panels, workshops, readings, uh, and sort of, and, and a huge, you know, exhibit book fair, kind of 20 times larger than the one we're accustomed to. It's something like rainbow book fair. Yeah. So uh, I was an, a, a, a participant, a reader, at an off-site reading on a, on a Thursday morning at 9 a.m. in the rain in, in Minneapolis, uh, organized by a local uh, LGBTQ writers group and, uh, in, in the, at the main branch of the library. And I just noticed that I was reading some poems about long-term, long-term living with HIV and, and and one or two other people, including one of the co-organizers, were, were you know, men in their 50s reading poems like that. And I just sat there in the audience after I read and, and thought, 
huh, this is kind of interesting. Is this? I haven't really heard this before. You know that there's a sort of you get a bunch of gay poets together, and two or three of them have stories about you know being in their fifties and being HIV positive for twenty five or thirty years. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we need an, a new anthology that's not uh, you know that's not uh, poets in general responding to an AIDS epidemic or uh, uh, or an anthology of uh, which because we have anthologies like that. Uh, you know, um, or one uh, uh, gathering the work of, say, people we've lost to to AIDS, po poets that we lost, like the Persistent Voices anthology that uh, Philip Clark and uh, David Groff put together in the past couple of years, which is a wonderful book. And the book I was alluding to earlier, where poets in general just sort of responded to the AIDS epidemic, was uh, uh, I hope it was, uh, Poets for Life was the name of that, and it was edited by Marie Howe and Michael Klein back in, I think, the early 90s. Um, but in any case, I thought maybe it's actually time for an, for an anthology with poems by people living with AIDS, older folks like me and, and some other poets that I know, younger younger people who are, you know, continuing to, to zero convert, you know, 45 or 50,000 new cases uh, every year, then I thought, you know, let's, it should also be about just the idea of HIV as a thing in the world. You know, now we've got pre-exposure prophylaxis, PrEP, uh, that, a pill that people can take once a day to prevent HIV infection. And it'd be kind of interesting to have poems by people on PrEP or people considering PrEP or just people who are kind of really aware that HIV is something in the world and how it impacts their sexual relationships, their romantic relationships, they, writing about about living with risk, writing about living with fear. What do I? What am I doing about it? Am I not doing anything about it, and that scares me, or I just don't want to know? And I wanted to sort of get all those voices. Uh, so that was sort of that's back in in April that I had that kind of you know that spark of an idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was going to publish it on, or I'm going to publish it on my own press, which you also briefly mentioned that in February, I, whatever, whatever I did, I guess incorporated is not quite the word, but established a, a company um, called Indolent Enterprises, LLC. And mm -hmm. it is the parent company of a, of a, a press called Indolent Books. And we can, we can talk about that separately. I want to finish one story before we go into another, but why okay. did I choose to call it? Why did I choose to call it indolent books? Unless you want to, unless you want to segue into that now. But in terms of HIV here and now, uh, so that's it. I wanted to print an anthology, and I found pretty quickly through say May that uh, it was hard to get these poems, and that uh, as much as I think there's a lot of people out there who have that kind of work, I don't know. It was it was the part about not having HIV. That's what I was having trouble communicating was that uh, I was originally I was calling the project living with uh, uh, living with HIV. Uh, I think I was actually just calling it living with HIV today or something like that. And I meant I wanted to try to put over this idea, sort of introduce this idea that living with HIV didn't necessarily mean being HIV positive. It meant living with HIV as a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. No one really got it. <laughs> I shouldn't say no one is a bit of a, you know. I shouldn't speak in extremes like that or absolutes like that, but no one really got that. Uh, and so, there, so why I so I started, I thought, you know, there there needs to be something like a website of some sort where where this is in people's face every day, and I can begin to build awareness about the project. And maybe because clearly it's taking me more than just a simple call for submissions yeah. to kind of get people to understand what I'm talking about. That it's not just an HIV positive anthology. And so I thought, oh, well, what can I, what if I had like a poem a day thing? And then I thought, what can I pin it on? You know, and then I just thought, oh, well, you know, let's see where, well, A1 was the beginning of AIDS. So now it's going to be it's 2016, 35 years. It's a nice, you know, increments of five or good anniversaries. So I'll kind of pitch this thing as a, a, a poem a day countdown to 35 years of AIDS and we'll mark it from June 5th. So but I actually was, was confused about my dates, and I was thinking of that Times article, which had come out in July. So I'm at like my favorite cafe one one morning or afternoon, you know, having some lunch and doing some work, and suddenly I start seeing people posting on Facebook about the C, the, the the you know the June fifth article that I had mentioned because people in the AIDS activism community kind of are aware of that, and I was like, 
Ooh, <laughs> I need that website up today. So I am sort of good with things like that. I, you know, I bought the domain uh, HIVHereAndNow.com. Mm -hmm. I installed, uh, you know, I did a, a new WordPress install on my hosting account. And within like a half hour, there was a site, very rudimentary. And I put my own, one of my own poems up as poem number one. So I now had another day to try to get the first poem. I mean, the first poem by someone other than me. And so we've now had 200, and I think I put up poem 214 today. Uh, it's actually going to be 366 poems, not 365, because I started on a June 5th, and I'll be ending on a June 5th. So actually, it's a year and a day. And is it, are, they, are, the, are, these, um, are they all from different poets? So that's the thing. They're all from different poets, and I, I sometimes have to feel very, feel very sort of badly. But I'll put out one of my periodic calls for calls of desperation. I have nothing left in my queue. People, remember, <laughs> this is going on for a year. You have to keep sending me work. And someone who's already been on the site will say, "Oh, well, I have some different additional stuff if you're interested." And I'll say, "Like, I, I really appreciate your." You know what's the word to use? Like enthusiasm, or or um, uh, it's a better word than that, like uh, dedication or something. But I mean, commitment to the project. But I'm try. I think it would be so cool to to do this for a year and a day and never repeat a poet mm -hmm. as a sort of statement of how much you know awareness or interest or concern there is that that we can go a poem a day and never have to repeat a a, a, a poet. Uh, the fact is actually that so that is very quite difficult, frankly. Uh, and I had to really broaden, so, you know, so not even, so although it is a different po poet or writer, because I'm also doing short prose pieces of up to about 500 words, uh, but there have been days when I really literally, when I didn't have anything. And I, on those days, I will post a, I did this, I did this today, yesterday, in fact. On those days, I will post uh, an appropriate poem or prose passage in the public domain by someone that I think readers will still enjoy. So a Shakespeare sonnet, I, I offhand without having it in front of me, I forget the number, but it's the one that talks about festering weeds. Uh, and I just thought that the, just the idea of, of uh, or festering flowers, festering flowers, flowers are, I'm sorry, I can't quote the line. Um, that's bad. But uh, festering flowers or weeds or something like that, and and the fester part just made me sort of think, and it was about the smell, and I just somehow thought that that had some at least tangential way of making a reader think about disease. Now, uh, are, are you gonna? Are you? Is the anthology going to be called from those? Okay, poems? so good question. Uh, It'll overlap, but it won't be uh, called. It'll be called from those as much as possible. So there's sort of two different missions, right? So, uh, so what I was saying at the outset was that the anthology is supposed to be about uh, HIV here and now. You know what it's like to either be HIV positive or have a partner who's HIV positive or be live or, or be sexually active in the gay community or in other communities. Uh, you know, and uh, so the the and, and then the website. Uh, first of all, it would have been hard to get enough work that fit into those categories. Uh, so I started, so the website was going to be, and it's also a, 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 ce a celebrating or marking an anniversary of the actual AIDS epidemic of the 80s and 90s, um, which started to taper off in the sense that we, men like you and I, lived through, you know, the, 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 act, the intensity, intensity of the AIDS epidemic from the 80s to the, to the 90s until effective treatments came along. You know, we can say that there was definitely a period of time from 1981 to 1996 where the worst ravages took place. And that's kind of what I'm referring to as the AIDS epidemic mm -hmm. um, in that sense of the word. And that this is commemorating that. And so it's allowed to look back in a way that I don't really want the anthology to really look back and be a historical record. I want the anthology to really be about now, which and now can involve the idea that you now mourn a partner who died 10 years ago, but I want it to be in, in, in some way, you know, about the present. Mm -hmm. uh, so the website's a little different. So the website actually has some, you know, uh, venerable, you might say, poems that appeared in books like uh, Michael Klein and Marie Howe's uh, 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 Poets for Life. Phyllis Levin's poem on the, web, on the HIV Here and Now website was in that anthology. 
uh, many years ago. Uh, and uh, other people, uh, I have some work from, so then I mentioned that Michael, uh, David Groff and Philip Clark edited an anthology in the past couple of years called Persistent Voices, where they gathered as much as they could the work of, of a, a pretty significant number of poets who were prominent or on their way to prominence when they died of AIDS, you know, generally at young ages in their 30s or 40s. And uh, I've used some of those poems. I would use more of them. I'm so swamped with work with this. I need to find the poems that I want to use and then look into the permissions issue because mm -hmm. they all appeared somewhere initially and I have to go, you know, go to the right relative or executor of the literary estate. So a lot of this is, is, is sort of more work that I can kind of really that I can handle as easily. I wish I could handle it more or that I had sort of more volunteers working with me. I do have one very dedicated uh, staff member, uh, Maxton Young-Jones, who's a friend of mine who uh, is doing outreach to some communities that uh, he might be able to reach out to more effectively than I can. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, so yeah, so the anthology will overlap with the website and the website was intended in part as a like recruitment tool, if that would be the right word. Um, but, uh, it was not going to be exactly the same, um, in particular because a couple of reasons they serve two different functions and also, uh, I think that would be a really fat anthology, right? So <laughs> yeah. I, I think it should, it'll be fewer pieces, uh, and I also want the anthology to, in addition to things that you expect to see, like a biographical note, I would love to get a short statement, you know, a paragraph from each poet uh, about something. I mean, about the poem or just about sort of how, what, what perspective, you know, what's their role, sort of what's their place in the spectrum? Are they a person with HIV? Are they a person on PrEP? Are they a, neg a person in a, 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 a negative partner in a zero discordant relationship? Uh, you know, things like that. So there could be a lot of sort of other things in the book besides, in addition to the whatever number of poems it ends up being. Um, and I do need to start assembling that manuscript soon because if I want the book to come out towards the end of uh, 2016, which is what I'm now thinking, uh, some, some sort of combination of, I'm thinking of events organized around World AIDS Day, December 1st, 2016, and I'm mm -hmm. also thinking around the potential that it could actually be a gift item in the holidays of December 2016. So if the book's going to get has, have a chance of getting reviews in, in important places like Publishers Weekly, it, it, it needs to be out in um, review form four months before its actual publication date. So we're looking at, at having to have this thing done sometime over the summer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was going to ask you, but you just answered my question about when you were going to put it out. Uh, can we can we talk about indolent books? Yeah, so that's a that's a new small independent literary press focusing initially on poetry chapbooks. Well, it's focusing on a couple of things. Uh, so one of them is poetry chapbooks, uh, and I, and it doesn't mean that I'll always do only chaps. And of course, the anthology that we've been talking about is going to be an indolent publication. Uh, but um, so even for the spring, one of our five books turns out to not really be a poetry chap book per se. Um, it's a it's a it's a sort of long form essay with prose poems as part of it. So from the very beginning, I'm breaking my own rules um, and doing a prose prose work. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other part of uh, the the reason it's called in, the, the the inspiration for why why it's called indolent and what that's supposed to mean is that uh, uh, you probably know that I kind of went through a pretty much a year-long, fairly major depression in 2013. And it had to do with a lot of different things, and we don't need to talk about all of that now, but as a way to try to crawl back from that, I started really trying to form some more, some new uh, poetry friendships uh, with people either that you know were new in my life or had been in my life for a long time, but with whom I hadn't had that much contact. And meet and talk about poetry and write poetry together and comment on each other's work. And the people I did that with were in their 40s or 50s. I'm in my 50s. And they were people who didn't have a first, who've been writing poetry for years, but didn't have a first, uh, first book out or even first chat book out in the world. And they began to think, you know, there's a person that, like, and I, and I didn't until my, my book, my, my book, which is a very slim book and could almost be thought of as a chat book, came out in 2014. 
and was a finalist for that <laughs> 20, <laughs> for the 2014 uh, Lambda Literary Award for Gay Poetry. Just to slip that in there. But anyway, yeah, this um, life now. It's called <laughs> this life now. So this life now. So uh, so I thought you know there's kind of like it looks like there's a phenomenon. I, I can't exactly yeah. explain it, but of the sort of slow burning, you know, late blooming poet who is doing good work, is getting the, you know, taking workshops, getting the MFA, writing the, the, the poems, maybe publishing in journals a lot or a little, uh, but doesn't put the, uh, wants a collection, but doesn't do it for some reason, some sort of indolence, you know, some sort of, which sort of people think of as sort of being synonymous with lazy and slothful. But I, I thought of it just as sort of being a little slow on the uptake. And, and maybe it's because of, uh, anxiety about self-promotion or you know maybe it's for a lot of different things but I really felt there was sort of it wasn't just coincidence so there are there are sort of there are people out there who are kind of indolent in a certain way and, and not really necessarily in a bad way but almost more like like a like a uh, zodiac uh, uh what's the word I'm looking for the, the one that's not uh astrology almost like in an astrological way where it's like in your stars that you're going to sort of be a late bloomer Okay. That these people should have a press, and I'm going to put it together. And so the idea of Indolent was to specifically focus on older writers of merit, right, who, who did good work and um, were not new at the game, but for whatever reason had not published a first collection. Um, and uh, so three of my – four of my, of my five chaps for the spring follow that rule. The, 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 um, the, I, I guess can I mention who the, who the authors are? Sure, Absolutely. So the author who doesn't follow the rule is a brilliant young man named Joe Osmondson, or Joseph Osmondson. I, 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 I'm not sure if he uses Joseph in print. And uh, so this actually came to me through HIV here and now. So a, friend, a mutual friend turned me on to a piece he had written in the uh, L.A. Review of Books about how he tested, he had like, I think, two false, false positive HIV tests before he finally had a true positive HIV test. And in a, several thousand words, he kind of tells the story of what that was like to sort of test positive for HIV three times in total, two of them being false positives, and then you get sort of into the habit of thinking it's always going to be a false positive, and then the third time it was real. Yeah. And he interspersed uh, within that, again, I don't know, the, I can't tell you, the, the, I don't know the number of words offhand, but it's, a, it's definitely a long-form journalism kind of piece, or, et, per, or essay kind of piece. And within it, there are 10 prose poems about HIV, uh, and they are set off, and they're italicized, and they're in a very different tone. They are truly, they are poetry, as opposed to, and, and the rest of the piece really is very good prose. And uh, that work is called Capsid, A Love Song, and a capsid is the term for it's it's a it's a term for the HIV virus particle itself, or perhaps a part of it. I'm actually not sure. Okay. So we've got Joe Osmondson's capsid, a love story, and he's only in his 20s, and so he doesn't really follow the regular indolent pattern. He's actually getting off to quite a roaring start as a writer. Um, but I just wanted to publish that book as a mm -hmm. chapter. Um, the, the essay as a, as a standalone chat book. Then we've got um, my my uh, we've got Sarah Sarai who actually has published before in in book form. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with her or not, but she's uh, she's done fiction writing and poetry writing and has a book or two out there, but sort of hasn't made the mark in the world. I think you know that maybe the, the, her work deserves and 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 I wanted to, to do a chat book by her. Mm -hmm. So we have we have set, we have her coming out in the spring as well. I'm going to forget some of the, t actually, some of the titles might still be in flux, so I won't mention titles necessarily. Uh, then we've got uh, my friend Deborah uh, Lidov, or Lidov. I'm actually not sure how she pronounces her last name, and I had a university professor who was her uncle and uh, pronounced it Lidov, but I'm not sure if Deborah pronounces it that way. Um, and uh, she's in that classic indolent category where she's in her 40s, she's published in journals. She uh, just actually, and at the time that we were form concocting this plan, because she, she's someone I spoke to about a lot before I did it, uh, we thought that her, that a, a manuscript of hers called Trance uh, would come out on Indolent, but actually it ended up coming out a few months ago on Finishing Line. So she also has a piece of uh, a chapbook in the world. 
And then Fox, and then there's a, a, a fellow named Robert Carr, again, came to me through HIV here and now. So Ada Lamone, who many people will recognize that name, she was a, she's a poet who was a finalist for the National Book Award this year. It was just a few weeks ago. Um, she was teaching a workshop over the summer at the Fine Arts Work Center in Provincetown. Bob was in her workshop. Bob was writing poems about HIV. Uh, Ada said she, he should contact me. He did. There's a poem of his on the HIV Here and Now project website. And I was aware that he was working on, you know, a larger collection. And so we corresponded and talked a little bit. And I'm putting out his first uh, chat book as, as one of my five in the spring. And that's called Amaranth, which is a kind of, it's a family of flowers. And uh, it's divided into three sections. The, the, the chat book is each one titled after a different kind of amaranth or a different flower in the amaranth family. And uh, they are gay poems and, and AIDS poems and just sort of coming-of-age poems and love poems and all sorts of things. And there's, it's a, a, a beautiful little book. And then the last, oh, then let's see, did I mention everyone so far? I think so. So we had Joe, Sarah. Uh, oh, no, then there's my friend uh, uh, Lisa Andrews, who was my first true indolent. She's about my age, mid-50s has published a bit in journals, but has not published uh, a, a collection. And uh, we've been meeting, she was one of my early help me get out of my depression writing partners. And so we've been meeting for quite some time now, since mid-2013. And she's got a manuscript uh, called Dear Liz. And Liz was a friend of hers who died uh, at, a, at a young age and had been very important to Lisa as a, as a friend and as, as sort of a I don't know, uh, more than a friend, kind of an inspiration. I'm one of those people who is a, almost a mentor, but they're the same age. It's sort of funny to think of it as mentorship, but an inspirational friend who meant a lot. And so it's a series of poems about Liz and about their friendship and about how Liz dealt with her, um, her sickness, that, you know, how cheerfully and bravely she dealt with uh, the last part of her life. And then we have a, a final, finally, number five is by this guy named Michael Broder. I never wanted to publish myself. Um, I thought it was a bad idea. I thought that it sort of took away a certain editorial distance that it's important to have. But I had this collection kind of left over from the poems that didn't make it into this life now for whatever reason. And I really wanted it out there to kind of clear the decks of work written kind of in the early to mid 2000s and really begin to focus on new work for publication mm -hmm. and uh there was a press that i was hoping to publish it on and that didn't work out and it was like okay time's a waste in um hope this doesn't hurt your audio i was gonna <laughs> clap my hands uh time's a waste and i ain't getting any younger i'm gonna publish it myself but i'm going to get someone to edit it which is not anything i'm doing with any of the other books mm -hmm. somebody to whom i'm going to hand this over and say save me from you know protect me from myself yeah uh uh the sections, the titles, the poems, you know, go in there and line edit, go in there and tell me to take certain things out, uh, so on and so forth. And he's done that. Um, and I'm not going to mention his name at this point. I want that to be a little okay. more of a surprise. So that's well, what we're doing. So they're going to debut at AWP. I ha I'll have a, a table in the exhibit fair at AWP in Los Angeles at the end of March, beginning of April. I think it's that last sort of swing weekend from like March 30th to April 2nd. And that's where the world will first see indolent books. Well, you it, you just sound so busy. I am really busy. And that's a good thing. That's all in addition to my freelance medical writing career, yeah. <laughs> um, I have a question. I'm just curious because I, I, I'm, uh, we're going to wrap it up. But I was, when you put out a chat book, where's the, where's the book, where's the press? So we're going to, we're work at, we think, my, I did, I did have recruited a art director and print production manager is what I'm calling her. Uh, named Katie Diamond, who used to be involved with a enterprise or a publication called Salacious. So people can look up Katie's what Katie Diamond's website and Salacious, the Salacious website, to see the kind of work she's done. But uh, see, there's that Bing, and it wasn't from an email; it was from a text message. Oh, it's okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're for the mo we're planning to use Ingram. I, I don't even know. It's gotten so complicated. I forget what we used to call it. But there's now like there the uh, Ingram Spark is a is a sort of a platform or a program for small publishers and self publishers. Okay. But their actual 
print platform is called Lightning Source, and I find oh yeah, okay, I've heard of that. You've heard of Lightning Source, and yeah. So you don't get an account with Lightning Source anymore. You get an account with Ingram Spark, and I'm just letting Katie work. I don't understand it, and she's handling all of that for me. But okay. that's how we're doing it. So it's in a digital printing kind of thing where we can produce print books, we can produce digital you know ebooks. We can print a run, or we can do print on demand, or we can do some combination of, of those. So there's a lot of flexibility that's involved, and okay. from what you know, from what I know, the quality is good. Great. I'm just always curious about that stuff. Yeah. Now, um, it's been really good to talk to you again. Too. And what's um, just give people the URL for. Um, Right. Well, I mean, it's easiest just to, well, the URL is living, no, excuse me, that's the old one, is HIV here and now, all spelled out, HIV here and now dot com. Uh, so that'll work if you put it into your browser. But you can also, it will show up very easily on a Google search. I think it'll come up in, at the top because there's mm -hmm. so much, you know, it is over 200 poems. So it's gotten, Google has had a lot of things to link to grab onto. Yeah. So it's easy to find. And, um, uh, I was mentioning earlier that I, I know we have to wrap up, but that sometimes I have to publish some Shakespeare or some John Donne or some Wordsworth or something. And yesterday's piece was actually the uh, ancient Greek historian Thucydides describing the plague in Athens in 430 BC during the Peloponnesian War. And uh, I, I've thought in the back of my head for a long time that I want to include that one day. So yesterday was the day. <laughs> you got your chance. <laughs> Uh, I was uh, oh just I'm I'll end with the um, the Facebook thing. I know that it's not because I have the I have a Facebook page for LGBT senior, mm -hmm. and um, a part of it is appearance. It, it, I mean, it just it looks good. So people go to the site and they go, oh, you know, like four thousand people or whatever, exactly. thousand thousand people. But it it actually does help with um with awareness because sometimes, as you will know from your own page. Because you get to you see the reach, right? So sometimes you'll put something out, and you know hundreds of people will see it. So it, it's definitely an it's a it's an effective tool. It is, it is, and I I, I joined a bunch of um, this maybe cynical. I don't think it is. It's a way of using Facebook. I joined a lot of groups, not pages, because you can't really share to a page very well. Yeah. But I joined a lot of HIV and AIDS and LGBTQ related groups. And I sit there, talk about being busy, I sit there every day after a poem is posted and share the link to about 20 different um, groups. Wow. And so the reach is often in the, it does depend on the poem and the poet and what, what they also do and, and, and a lot of different things that I can't even understand. But there's sometimes a 2,000 or more reach for some of the pieces and you know sometimes it's only in the hundreds and sometimes it's in the 1200s but it can also be very high so for, yeah. for a single piece you know so that's kind of cool yes michael it's been great to talk to you again i wish you the absolute best success i hope to see you at the rainbow book yeah, fair in will. april um and and with your books exactly there should be books <laughs> okay be books all right i'll talk to you soon thanks thank a lot. you very much bye okay bye